Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and the best uh, regards from Altiport in Megev, where I just landed uh, from Paris. Very happy you have accepted to join us for a quick survey of the situation of the business aviation after the COVID crisis and what are the, the figures and your opinion on how did you pass through the crisis and what do you expect in the near future? Maybe, maybe uh, Arthur Thomas could start with some figures about uh, business aviation in Europe compared to business aviation in the US. Uh, I can absolutely. So good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So Arthur Thomas, uh, I work as the, uh, I would say the da data expert, the, the market intelligence uh, guy in uh, the European Business Aviation Association in Brussels, Belgium, uh, where the weather is uh, sunny. So it's pretty nice. Uh, it's not used use um it's, it's something we are not used to in belgium in general so i enjoy this this weather pretty well uh talking to a little bit less sunny uh things and figures uh talking about the the business aviation uh and the way it went through uh the COVID crisis with some uh figures so i'm gonna share my screen but I don't anyway know. arthur uh, we do appreciate your participation to this webinar because you are the best European expert in the field. Thank you. No, you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Ah, I see Christophe. Hello, Christophe. Hello, Gérard. How are you? Fine. Happy to have you. Yeah, with us. happy to be there. Okay, Arthur. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just trying to share my screen, but uh, it does not seem to work. Unless you, you don't see anything right for the moment. No. No. Uh, so I don't exactly know how I can share my screen. Uh, we tested before. I can't. I can't share my screen for some reason. Uh, it's pretty weird. Well, I, I will. I will do without the slides. But basically, in terms of. Um, the, the way business aviation went through the crisis. Um, so the aviation ecosystem was severely impacted, uh, as you all know, by this crisis. It started um, from mid-March and uh, we have seen a huge uh, decrease in the business aviation activity and in all the aviation activity uh, in Europe and in the world. In terms of pure figures, basically uh, the business aviation in Europe has fallen um, from, I would say, normal normal um, figures to minus 70, 75% uh, compared with uh, a year before uh, in a little bit less than two weeks. And uh, this is where business aviation has been maintaining itself throughout pretty much all the crisis. So in terms of pure figures, uh, the, the European business aviation activity is minus 70, 75% throughout the past um, 10, 12 weeks. And we are starting slowly to see um, a little bit uh, of a recovery there. Uh, as we speak now, business aviation is about uh, minus 50, 60% uh, compared with uh, the same week one year ago. Um, so this is the way business aviation has been through uh, this crisis. Um, just in terms of other figures uh, that we can see um, throughout the crisis. Um, so when I say uh, minus 70% for business aviation, for the airline industry, it's been minus 90%. So uh, we, really, we really can say that the airline industry has simply stopped uh, during the crisis. And business aviation was flying to some extent. Um, to the point that we have seen uh, a market share of business aviation um, the last week, 25% of the aviation activity is business aviation as we speak. One aircraft out of four flying in Europe right now is business aviation. This is the highest market share we have ever seen for business aviation. <laughs> this, is, this is as simple as that. So would you want to look at the sky right now? The, you will see more business aircraft than ever. Um, 
So this is some of the big uh, trends we can we have observed throughout the crisis. Another trend we have seen. Uh, I have I have few trends to share. Um, we have seen uh, progressively, um, and it's it's a surprise to no one. Uh, we have seen that um, the, the closure of international markets. So when I say that business aviation has kept flying a little bit, uh, yes, indeed, it has kept flying a little bit, but only uh, within the same countries. So it was pure internal traffic. And um, when usually we see uh, as the first international market in Europe, uh, France, UK, uh, which is positioned uh, as the fourth, fifth biggest market, the four first one being uh, France internal market, UK internal market, Germany internal market, and then you have uh, UK France as the first uh, international market. Now we don't see any international market anymore at all. So the top markets now are purely internal markets. Uh, internal Europe. It, yes. So internal so European. In, exactly. So when we speak about business aviation flying now, it's happening within the same country, pretty much. So any uh -huh. a business aircraft. Um, Taking off in France will land in, will land in France. Uh, this is what we have observed throughout the crisis, and it was the same in all the countries, pretty much. Um, so this is another trend that we have observed uh, during the crisis. Uh, a third trend that we have observed is the fact that um, the non-commercial segment of business aviation, so the purely private business aviation, has really, really uh, decreased a lot. Uh, when, in general, um, the private business aviation accounts for one third of all the activity, uh, now it's just one fourth of the activity. So the private business aviation is, is grounded to some extent. And we have seen much more uh, medical business aviation uh, flying. And um, now that uh, the traffic is slowly recovering, we see that the driver of this recovery is the commercial business aviation. So that might mean new customers, that might mean a lot of things. Um, but what we observe uh, now is that uh, the charter component of business aviation is, is, is leading the way to some extent. And uh, I would like to share a last trend the last trend is uh, in terms of what airplanes are flying. Uh, I will talk of segments here. Uh, we have seen during the crisis the almost grounding of all the big business airplanes. So in general, um, the, big, the, big, the big segments like heavy jets, like mid-sized jets, like bizliners, uh, this is pretty much uh, one, one third of the business aviation activity. And now this is uh, the same one fourth of the business aviation activity. The 75 remaining persons are small jets and turboprops. So this is trends that have been uh, put in place uh, throughout the crisis. Uh, no private business aviation anymore, no big jets anymore. Uh, and now we see the recovery happening with uh, drivers being light jets and turboprops commercial business aviation and a slow return of international traffic. That's it. Yeah, Pierre, as a general manager of a uh, business aviation airport in Yombron, uh, can you confirm the figures and the trends described by Arthur Thomas? Yes, uh, Gerard, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just a few facts and figures uh, regarding uh, Lyon Bon Airport. Uh, Lyon Bon Airport is a, a, an airport dedicated to business aviation located in Lyon, in France. Uh, our traffic is uh, mostly uh, Schengen and uh, uh, mostly uh, domestic. Um, we have a, a small seasonality peaks during the winter season. Uh, I completely share what uh, Arthur uh, just uh, told us a few minutes a few minutes ago. Uh, in Lyon Bon Airport, uh, uh, we we suffered a, a drastic uh, drop uh, mid March, uh, and uh, we we observe a, a forty five percent drop in March. The, the, the first two weeks of March were pretty good, um, but in April. 
uh, the drop uh, uh, was of uh, 70% compared to last year. Um, and uh, we, we have noticed a small increase, a small ramp up uh, in May uh, due to the, uh, the, the softening of the restriction uh, from the French government. Um, and June uh, seems to be better than May. So we are in a, in a, in a, in a good trend for the moment. Uh, this trend uh, is driven mostly by the based uh, airlines uh, in Lyon Bron. We have five based airlines. Uh, we, we decided not to close the airport in, in, in Bron. Uh, we are on uh, all call, uh, on call duty uh, operations for the moment. And uh, uh, so the airlines, the base airlines, uh, could uh, could um, uh, operate uh, during the, the, the containment uh, period, and they operated mostly COVID flights, medical uh, uh, repatriation flights at the beginning of the containment. Uh, the drop for them was, uh, let's yeah. say, only of fifty uh, percent, but uh, they are uh, they are recovering uh, in, uh, in in June. And uh, we are uh, also uh, noticing uh, uh, since the beginning of the month um, uh, that non-based aircrafts are coming back. They were completely uh, grounded uh, during uh, uh, April and May. And uh, since the beginning of the month, uh, we, 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 we welcome uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this new this air, this aircraft. Uh, um, and the traffic is not coming back to normal for sure uh, it will be a long recovery but uh, the the trend is uh, is pretty good uh, we are expecting uh, a, a low summer season and waiting for uh, the return of the vacation in september uh, to uh, to to see what would be the trend for 2020 but for sure we will uh, we will uh, we'll have a, a a year with uh, with a decrease of traffic around uh, 30 to 50 percent compared to last year okay uh, arnold would you add a word on those uh, commentaries yeah for sure um well i guess the, the figures shared by uh, arthur and, and pierre are, are pretty clear the impact is is really huge. Uh, we are talking about a decrease of more than 70, 75 percent. This is absolutely unseen situation uh, in in aviation history. Um, at, at the end, I believe that uh, aviation is a global business and serves for for the most part uh, very well, not very but basic needs such as connecting people, connecting businesses. So. It will recover for sure. The real questions, and, and Pierre was mentioning it, is when and how. Uh, I don't know. My, my personal perception is um, uh, there will be a rather fast recovery to about 80% of normal activities. And what is difficult to, 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 un, to, to know is the remaining 20%, because it depends on so many variables that it's really complicated to analyze what is the type of services you are offering, uh, what is your dependence on international traffic, uh, what are your uh, national politics uh, decisions, uh, what was your own uh, situation, your uh, state of affairs before the crisis, uh, if you had uh, money, if you had problems and so on, uh, what are um, your own government priorities to support your industry and uh, your local authorities and so on. So I, I believe here again that 80% of things are going to come back pretty fast and the remaining 20% really I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm pretty optimistic at the end of the day because well what what working 100% online for three months has taught us is that it's nice to work from home and it's nice to have cameras and so on but it's also really great to to connect and um and travel and meet people and uh, do some business oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm i'm rather optimistic on the for a, a rather quick recovery and uh just for uh um, my personal perception uh we are uh, aircraft maintenance uh, uh software provider uh we have 200 clients worldwide and my perception is that uh it will 
very much depend on the on the local situations uh, because our clients have been, and I think Pierre uh, and and Arthur mentioned it earlier. Uh, most of the clients had some really huge stops. Some of them had some slight accelerations of business during the beginning of the crisis, but everything is back to normal now. So we'll see. It's pretty early stage now. Christophe, as a private pilot and the general manager, CEO of a big company uh, in software, what is your opinion on this first subject? Um, well, uh, hello everyone. Well, Gérard, it's not a big company. It's quite a, quite a small, but, small one, but anyways, uh, in several countries. Um, as far as I am concerned, um, I speak about business and uh, the, the way we work. Uh, we will gonna work. For, we will keep working from now on. We discovered during this crisis um, how good home working was. Uh, I mean, um, until now, um, every meeting was a physical one. Um, I'm not sure we'll get back to this uh, anymore. Um, we 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 earn a lot of time uh, with home working. Uh, we spare a lot of money as well. Uh, and for instance, when I have a, a meeting with uh, in Paris with some of my guys from Spain, from south of France, from well, until now uh, as I traveled, I'm not sure we will do this anymore. Okay, uh, on this first point. Uh, before to go to the second one, any of you has any idea of the reason why, for example, in the US, the first two weeks of June, business and private aviation both are only minus 10 percent of what they were in June 2019. In, in Europe, it seems to be 35 to 40 percent. Do you see any reason for that? Who, who want to answer? Uh, Gérard, maybe I can, I can, I can answer. Uh, give you yes. My point of view. Uh, uh, first, I think that uh, business aviation in the U.S. is uh, is uh, customary, so it's it's easier. Uh, it's uh, it's a reflex for for. Uh, uh, most of the players to to take uh, to take uh, business jets to to travel uh, uh, around the country. Uh, they have a, a, an internal, a very huge internal market, uh, so uh, it helps uh, the business airlines uh, to to get uh, um, uh, let's say interesting prices uh, compared to uh, the prices we can uh, we can uh, contemplate in, uh, in in Europe. So it may it may be uh, one uh, one. Uh, one explanation. Uh, the second one is that uh, uh, I think there is a, a, a discrepancy between the period uh, in, in the US and in Europe uh, uh, on the impact of the of the COVID crisis. So uh, there is a, there is a, um, a one month uh, delay uh, between the US and, uh, and Europe, and it may be one of uh, another explanation. Okay, so. Anybody want to add something on this point? I, I will, I will, uh, Gérard, if you allow me, uh, Arthur yeah. speaking. Just, I just forgot to mention uh, EBA, EBAA, European Business Aviation Association. Uh, so, you know, this is the, the company I, I, I speak for here. I'm pretty confident that a lot of you know who is EBA, but I'm just going to, you know, uh, say it again. Uh, so the, 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 the EBA is the voice for business aviation in Brussels. Uh, we do represent the industry. We are the trade association for business aviation. Um, and, you know, we organize eBase uh, and, you know, we are 15 people working closely with the European regulators to make sure that uh, when things happen uh, in the regulatory environment, uh, it's, it's benefiting to the business aviation ecosystem and not uh, driving it down and, 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 and creating issues. Um, so just this, uh, on your question of, about the American market, um, I would say the answer is pretty obvious. USA and Europe are two totally different animals. Uh, as Pierre was mentioning, uh, USA is a single market. That's it. Uh, in Europe, we have faced uh, border closure. What do you want to do 
with aviation when you close the borders. That's that's pretty that's pretty simple. Uh, so for the big markets such as France, UK, and Germany, you still have you know things to do uh, internally. Uh, for instance, the French internal market accounts in, in normal times. I mean, huh? so uh, outside of any crisis, uh, the French internal market is fifty percent of the business aviation in France. Mm -hmm. So if you still uh, fly in France, you know, there is still sort of uh, things for you to fly, but you have half of the ecosystem that is simply down. In the US, the normal times, it's already 90, 90, 95 internal. So that's what might explain uh, this, this huge difference. Uh, just, just a thing, I think I have found the solution to share my presentation. So uh. let me just uh, try it. Do you see now the presentation on the screen? Loading, apparently loading. It's working I, for me, Arthur. I work. Great. It's working for me as well. It works. Okay. Great. Uh, perfect. I ju I'm just going to go very shortly go through those things because the, the, the figures I showed you are much more, you know, understandable with, with charts. So you see the red curve here on the screen is, uh, is 2020. The blue line is 2019 and the green line is 2018. So you see that uh, in general, uh, from March, we have a, you know, we have a slow start of the season uh, um, with different, you know, levels, but uh, the red curve show us here really what uh, this year is about. This is more detailed view week per week, because for the first time ever, uh, we have seen literally things evolving day by day. So the month approach is a little bit uh, too big to, to, to get a good idea of um, what this crisis is about. But you see that from um, mid-March onwards, uh, the traffic has been really, really decreasing and has been stabilizing around minus 75%. Uh, so the blue, the blue, the dark blue line is one year ago. Okay, uh, I'm sure you, you got it. And um, so you see the way business aviation has been uh, confronted with this crisis uh, during the past 12 weeks. This is a little bit too detailed. Here are the big markets. And you see that, no surprise, it's been uh, experienced the same way everywhere in Europe, with at, at the sole exception of Italy. As you see, the yellow curve here, it has started earlier. No surprise mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, the crisis has started in Europe, in Italy. And you see that from uh, mid, mid, uh, the third week of uh, February, um, Italy has, you know, has closed uh, and stopped its traffic, followed uh, a few weeks later by the rest of Europe. Uh, those are the big markets. Here you have the big airports, top 10 airports in Europe for business aviation. Um, so you have here München, uh, Munich, you have Luton, you have uh, Begin Hill, you have Farnborough, Le Bourget. Uh, you have uh, Cannes, Mandelieu, uh, Nice, Nice, sorry, Nice. Uh, you have uh, Roma, Campino, um, you have Vienne, Schwechat, uh, Zurich, and Geneva. And you see that all those airports have been having the same way, have been behaving exactly the same way throughout the crisis. And we have observed anyway that just before, um, just before the fall, we had a little bit of, you know, uh, increase. So I think uh, in the industry, this has been felt and we have seen that just before uh, business aviation stopped, basically, we had an increase in demand and uh, a little uh, uptick in, in the activity. This, this uh, chart shows the top markets here. And when usually the top 10 markets should be uh, three, four internal markets and the rest being international markets, the top 10 here is only domestic markets, only. And at the sole exception of Scandinavia, uh, always a little bit uh, different Scandinavia in terms of uh, everything, basically, um, the rest has been really, really strongly impacted. But it's slowly, slowly getting back to normal. I'm just going to show a uh, few slides. Um, so here you see this is the split of missions. So this is uh, business aviation uh, segmented by uh, different types of business aviation, the state component of business aviation, diplomatic flights, state flights, things like this. 
the non-commercial business aviation, the commercial business aviation, and the medical being the, the purple. And you see that uh, from, 12, uh, from week 12, so mid-March, uh, we have seen uh, almost a, re a real decrease, I mean, in the, in the non-commercial business aviation, the private business aviation, and we have seen a huge increase of the medical business aviation. Uh, this is important for us as a trade association because this is the good way for us to speak uh, on what our industry does uh, did for the crisis. This is just the last slide I'm going to show. Um, this is so the the blue curve here, the the dark curve is the airlines industry. This is pretty important because we see here, concretely speaking, that uh, business aviation is the first form of aviation to to recover from the crisis. Uh, this is something that might be at our advantage, uh, might be at our disadvantage as well, but this is very critical to, to get it because for the moment, airlines are still grounded, uh, although it's, it's, it's starting again. And business aviation has a huge opportunity there um, because if we look at the value proposition of our industry, um, I mean, the, what, what might drive people to travel? Uh, they might be willing to take business aviation instead of airlines. So, and we see it here. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty important to, to, you know, to understand. Uh, we are already mid-June, so we are lacking two weeks in this chart. And uh, I'm really, you know, uh, looking forward to see this curve again in one month. Um, and would you have a question on the availability of such a report? It's going to be available on EBA website as of tomorrow. Okay. Voilà. Good. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, very, very much, uh, Arthur. Uh, could we pass to the second point and try to discuss about a major issue, how our business, commercial or private business aviation treat with the request of sustainability. Can, do, can we do from Christophe with uh, his Malibu to Pierre Marnotte with uh, the BBJ uh, <laughs> based in, in Yombron? How do you consider the progress the business aviation have, has to, to make to survive or to develop better? Who wants to answer? Because it's a major issue. Ah, I have a problem. I know I can I, I can eventually start if you want, um, Gérard. Uh, okay. Because env right. environment, as you can imagine, uh, is really leading you know the agenda in Brussels. Uh, before the crisis, it was all over the place. Uh, everything we do uh, is linked with environment now. Every single other trade association uh, representing airline industry, representing other aviation industries, we talk constantly about environment. So then you have a crisis that happened, and uh, you know we, we are just wondering, you know, what about the environment in all this? Because uh, you know we have other things to deal with right now. Uh, in fact, not at all. Uh, in terms of European regulation, in terms of recovery uh, in the regulatory environment. Um, I would say that the European Commission uh, did not forget a single second the environment and uh, I would even say that uh, this crisis is the opportunity to, to get um, back in the sky with more uh, ambitious uh, targets than ever in terms of environment. What I want to share here is pretty simple. A lot of recovery measures that are taken by the European Union now will be um, made available to the companies that are leading the way in the environment front. Because that's just now or never in terms of pure political agenda. So basically, it's crucial, it's, it's really critical for any, any one of uh, the business aviation stakeholders to understand this point. Um, the world we will, uh, we, will, we will wake up in now uh, will be driven by environment more than ever. And um, the business aviation stakeholders better uh, share a, a clear vision on the way they see uh, their role uh, in, in, in the world of tomorrow. 
because um, the regulatory framework will be really, really tough there. So um, this is what I wanted to share in terms of the environment, uh, a little bit of advice, but a little bit of warning as well, uh, because this is what we see happening here in Brussels. And all the measures that are taken by the regulators will be you know, for those who will play the game of the environment. That's it. So we, we have to be very cautious about this question because, for example, during two months, neighbors of the airport <laughs> were in the full total silence. And now they discover again the noise of our aircraft and helicopters. So we have to cope with a terrible problem because they want to start again against our aircraft and helicopters. It's, it's a real problem because at this time, for example, in Toussaint-Lenoble, you have some interdiction of, uh, on some hours, on some days, on the weekends, and everywhere we, we feel the, the wrath of the people around the airport are increasing. How do you consider with uh, the, the same aircraft as we flew from the Malibu to the BBJ through the PC-12 or the Falcon. How do we uh, have to treat this problem? Gérard, maybe to, to, uh, to, to answer to Arthur. Uh, Arthur, I fully agree with you. Uh, all the stakeholders of the market uh, uh, must be involved uh, in the, this uh, uh, transition. Um, for my, my opinion is that uh, the, the aircraft manufacturers will be at the top of the will lead uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, shift in our industry uh, airports will be uh, uh, important uh, stakeholders too uh, because we will have we, we foresee uh, uh, drastic uh, modifications in terms of uh, infrastructures uh, for airports in the in the coming years um, if we shift to uh, to uh, to uh, sustainable uh, fuels for our uh, aircraft, it would uh, have an impact uh, for uh, each of us. Yeah. So uh, we will have to take this into account and to be uh, uh, in close uh, partnership uh, with uh, with all the actors, uh, um, beginning with uh, the the aircraft manufacturers. And I think it's a good opportunity for business aviation because uh, uh, we can be at the at the at the, at the top of the of this uh, new uh, new world for uh, for aviation, uh, and uh, we we have to take this uh, to see this opportunity. Uh, I think it's important uh, for for airlines, for airports, and for customers. Okay. Who on this point? Anybody else? Arnold, Christophe. Uh, just uh, th there was a, a question uh, regarding uh, uh, the fact that uh, business aviation operator uh, would convert uh, their aircraft to uh, uh, just to answer this uh, in uh, in uh, in Lyon we, we we don't see this kind of uh, uh, shift uh, um, business aircraft uh, still uh, remain uh, uh, dedicated to uh, commercial passengers, private passengers. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, a modification from uh, certain type of aircrafts from uh, um, um, commercial passengers to uh, uh, medical uh, passengers, but that's all, not uh, freight. Okay. Yes, uh, third point, uh, do you think that the situation, uh, present situation and coming situation will, uh, will lead to concentration, acquisition, fusion, and it will be difficult for little operators with a majority of them with uh, two or three aircraft or helicopter, not to continue uh, in this size, 
but to have to consider uh, joint ventures with bigger companies. Because, for example, in Ireland, uh, they already started before every everyone to concentrate the business aviation operators in two or one maximum. Do you consider that is a trend, a necessary trend for the future? Uh, yeah, uh, necessary, I don't know. But I, I think it will be a trend in the coming months and the coming years. Uh, the small mm -hmm. uh, will, uh, will, uh, will have a lot of difficulties to, to go through the crisis. Uh, the big will have less uh, difficulties and more opportunities. What we can see for the moment, from my point of view, uh, that uh, uh, some business, uh, business uh, airlines uh, are, um, have become very aggressive, uh, commercially speaking, uh, since the beginning of the crisis. Uh, and they, uh, they want to, uh, to prepare uh, the aftermath of uh, the, the crisis. Uh, whereas uh, some others are uh, more in a defensive uh, position. Uh, so we will see what will happen in the coming months, but uh, there are clearly from, uh, from, uh, from my point of view, uh, two, uh, uh, two, um, two ways uh, to deal with the crisis. One, uh, very aggressive one, uh, and the other one, more defensive. Uh, so we'll mm -hmm. see uh, who will be right at the end of the day. Okay, anybody has an, a point of view of this subject? No? no. Um, Gérard, just, I, I, I would like to answer the, the second question that has been raised in the, in the question part of the, of the, of the, of the device. Yeah. Um, go, so go. Voices are raising to ask the industry to reduce drastically its CO2 impact in return for the government support. Firstly, this is what happens, yes. And this is what happens at the European Union as well. So basically, um, to, to say what I said before with different words, basically, I think that um, the companies will get support from uh, the institutions and from the states. So they will receive support to, to recover uh, at the only condition that they play the game in the environment front. That's it. Mm -hmm. You play the game, we will help you. You don't play the game, we won't help you. That's as simple as this. Then a proposal was made to forbid business aviation for private matters within five years in France. Mm -hmm. um, this is a pure political statement, as we have seen at the end of last year in the UK, where a political announcement was made that all airports would be closed for business aviation because business aviation is bad. We know this kind of uh, things. It happens all the time in business aviation. Um, this is strong political statement. Uh, just this is absolutely impossible to implement uh, because uh, you simply cannot know who is using business aviation for what reason. Uh, uh, I think this is part of the, eco the business aviation ecosystem at the first place. Uh, we sell uh, confidentiality as well. And uh, you might have CEOs flying uh, for leisure, leisure purpose uh, because if uh, business is taking over during the holidays, they can get back to work, things like this. So this is, I think, uh, absolutely unrealistic. I would not be too afraid of things like this to happen. Um, the, the, what I would be more worried about uh, in terms of what's coming ne next is, um, is, in fact, what we have always uh, observed here uh, in the regulatory environment is that every thing everything is 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 dedicated to airlines those are the big guys everything is done for them and i mean for it's not like a for in the good sense of the world it's just all about them so uh, regulation is is taken in a way that you know makes sense for airlines but it has no meaning at all for business aviation um and we are, we are facing a huge um threat here uh to see uh, the aviation environment being reshaped by uh, the regulators uh, to make airlines fly again uh, with you know drastic measures, and uh, this could uh, have a huge impact on business aviation. Uh, just a simple uh, example of on the connectivity, for instance. Um, so business aviation flies uh, where others don't. 
Uh, business aviation is about three times more than airlines in, uh, in different uh, fields. Uh, but the, one of the most important for this ratio is the connectivity. Uh, the airlines European map is about 500 airports. So pretty, you, you use an airline in Europe, you can fly pretty much to 500 different airports. Business aviation flies 1,500 airports in Europe. Um, so it's three times more. Uh, where I come from is that uh, tomorrow, when um, things will be put in place for the industry to recover, we might see, you know, a huge uh, focus on those 500 airports. And if not 500, it will be 200 airports. And it might complexify uh, the business aviation ecosystem. Uh, because if uh, pretty much you have to reduce uh, the business aviation streams to 200 airports, um, business aviation will have to cope with that. And it's already an issue when things are normal to access the big airports, to get slots and things like this. So if we wake up tomorrow in a world uh, where, uh, you know, you will have to deal with less airports because, you know, it's more secure than, and, and, and you better control the, you know, you know, the, the, the flows of humans, uh, that might be a big issue for business aviation. So we are working uh, hard on this uh, front to make sure that the, the business aviation ecosystem, uh, which, which encompasses a lot more uh, remote airports than, 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 than airlines, uh, is kept alive. And this, uh, this issue has to be considered as well by private pilots uh, uh, with their own private aircraft as for uh, commercial uh, business aviation operators. Yes. From single engine, like uh, your Malibu Christophe, to the Falcon uh, through the King Airs, everybody, everybody will probably have to consider the sustainability of his activity to be able to pursue it. Yes, Jean, and I will be more concerned uh, about uh, light aviation, uh, training aviation, uh, rather than business aviation in the coming years. Uh, in terms of um, uh, environment, uh, environmental uh, constraints. Uh, I think it will be yes. a big issue for every airport so welcoming uh, uh, training, uh, training companies uh, uh, because uh, um, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our, um, our uh, neighbors uh, less and less understand the meaning of training aviation, light jets, Lighter, lighter aircraft. The problem will be probably more difficult for air club or approved training organization than for private aviation or business aviation. You're right, Pierre. Yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, I am really sorry, but the weather is not really improving in Mejev. And I, if I don't don't want to be stuck in Mejev, maybe you could continue to discuss. But uh, would you allow me to to leave uh, this first webinar? Uh, and I would like really thank you, each of you, to have accepted to participate, Arthur, Christophe, Arnold, and I hope we'll meet again on uh, this way of working. Okay. Do you allow me to leave? Sorry, because otherwise I have to sleep in Mejev. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Gérard, for for being our moderator today. Uh, I propose to to follow up for a few minutes with uh, all of you, if you if you agreed, uh, and uh, I, I will follow uh, the animation. Uh, so, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I am uh, Jean-Christophe Dray. I am the uh, commercial director of FlyUp. FlyUp, sorry. Uh, so, um, we would like to. We would like to, to speak about a certain issue, and maybe Arnold can go on with uh, with this matter about the digitalization uh, in the in the business aviation. I mean, uh, what about the new digital tools for uh, customer and also for pilot? What do you think about that? Do you think it, it's an issue for the coming year, or um, it's not? Uh, it's not something very important. I, that's a good question. Uh, what I believe is that it's a, it's a transformation, and uh, trans transformations have some good sides and uh, and bad sides. Uh, but but what I believe also is that it, it it's going to happen. 
is uh, digital is uh, in infusing every industry. For some industries, it is now very mature and it has disrupt uh, in depth uh, the, the, some industries. Uh, obviously, you, you, we talk about uh, retail uh, and, and, and other activities, uh, B2C activities like, like this. Uh, what I see in business aviation is it's just starting. Uh, so at this stage, no one can really predict the, the magnitude of the transformation. Uh, but, but, but what I believe it's going to impact the, the, the market Basically, you have to understand the digital transformation from uh, three types of benefits. The benefits you will have on your uh, operations, back office operation, how do you streamline, how do you automate your process, how do you leverage the data, everything that will help you optimize costs, okay, or increase productivity. And uh, uh, it will help you and uh, I, I, so sorry, I, for, I, I forgot who was mentioning that uh, it was really nice to have some collaboration tools and uh, new opportunities to work remotely. Uh, and it has been proved uh, essential lately. So digital transformation brings a lot of benefits in the operations. Okay. The, the second benefit, it will bring a lot of, uh, of new opportunities on the, on the front office, on the customer and uh, ecosystem facing side. Huh? Uh, what can you do to diversify your offerings? How can you leverage digital marketing to bring new ways to interact with your ecosystem? Obviously, what we are doing today uh, is something uh, ra rather new for, for, for you. Um, but here, the, the, the digital transformation will help um, to, to bring a lot of uh, differentiator and intimacy in the, in the relation. Okay, so it, it's quite important. Uh, I believe the discussion that was happening before is showing that the 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 the, the future is uh, is uh, somehow difficult to predict, and there will be some um, hard times to navigate. Um, so I believe those tools will help uh, create uh, new ways of interacting with the with the market. And the third leverage, and I think it's one of the the, the examples that was brought in the. Um, in the preparation of this uh, this webinar, uh, the technologies, the digital transformation helps you define new business models. Okay, how can you create more recurring business? How can you change uh, some of your offerings so that you can have some uh, new opportunities? Okay, uh, obviously we can uh, see uh, the shared economy in uh, in business and private aviation that is emerging. Uh, this, this initiatives, sorry, are, are happening just now. Um, we still don't know if it's going to be, uh, if it's going to be a success or not. My, my personal point of view is that somehow those, uh, those solutions are brought, uh, solutions are brought to any market when the market have problems. Okay. Uh, with no problem, there is no solutions. Okay. <laughs> um, so at the end of the day, the, 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 the recent crisis and the current the, the current crisis is a is a good pivotal point in uh, in the digital transformation. My personal feeling it's well, it's going to accelerate things, and I believe operators need to 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 address the situation both from that uh, operations uh, and that uh, customer facing uh, perspective. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, maybe uh, Arthur or Pierre, you, you want to add something about uh, uh, digital new role in, uh, in business aviation in the coming times? Um, on my side, I don't have a lot of things to say here. Obviously, uh, this is really an industry industry big. The only thing I can say is that it's, it's, it's happening and it's increasing. We, we have uh, within our members in EBA, 700 members are all the industry pretty much. We do see an increasing amount of, of members that are really, really looking forward and, and having initiative to digitalize their way of working. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a trend that won't, you know, that won't decrease. So yeah, that's, that's something we really see. And, uh, and even here in EBA, we are digitalizing a lot uh, what we do. So I guess this is, this yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, the, the part of the of the I'm, I'm speaking from my personal view as a software, but the part of the software 
uh, expense uh, that are helpful for to run digital uh, transformations such as uh, uh, automation, uh, digital uh, digitalization, and so on, has doubled in the last five years. So yes, uh, as Arthur was mentioning, it is happening now. Yes. Okay, and uh, from my point of view, uh, I would just say that uh, digitalization is part of uh, the flexibility uh, we have in business aviation, and it will help us to to improve this uh, this advantage. Uh, which is very important for us of, uh, and for our customers. Okay, thank you. Maybe Christophe, as a user, um, what do you think about uh, the use of new digital tools for flying your, your aircraft as user or pilot or boss? Well, um, as a pilot, I pretty much don't care about new technologies. What interests me is uh, is uh, is the fact is piloting. But um, on the other side, I'm the CEO of an IT company, and of course, digitalization is a is a big issue in every industry, not uh, not only in aer aeronautics, uh, but for sure, it will keep developing. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, well. the, the, one of the questions uh, when we start the webinar was about uh, the new profile for for coming customer in in uh, private aviation. A lot of people are saying that uh, the crisis will uh, will bring a new new customer in private aviation. I mean, uh, maybe people flying in uh, in. Uh, uh, business class or maybe higher and they do not want to use a commercial airline because the offer will not be full before the end of the year or maybe more and uh, before they do not want to face with uh, uh, with sanitary issues what do you think about that maybe pierre you can uh, you can answer or, or give give us your opinion uh, yeah, yeah sure i think that we, we benefit from two uh, two different things the first one is for the moment, the lack of uh, commercial connections. Uh, uh, it's particularly uh, uh, obvious in, in Lyon. Hein. We have a commercial uh, airport, uh, Lyon Saint-Exupéry, uh, which is uh, at, uh, at a very low, uh, low, uh, low activity in terms of operation, uh, only at 27 uh, connections uh, for the moment. So this is an advantage for us. The other one is uh, the um, uh, capacity uh, to uh, implement sanitary measures in uh, business airports and uh, uh, business aircrafts, uh, which is, according to me, much easier than in uh, uh, bigger airports and uh, bigger terminals. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in most of our business airports, customers uh, are seeking is to go uh, as fast as possible uh, through the terminal to the aircraft, uh, so it's, uh, it's easier for us to implement this kind of uh, solutions, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's clearly an advantage uh, for business aviation uh, in terms of uh, in terms of operations and uh, commercial uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, force uh, regarding to commercial uh, commercial airports. Okay, thank you. Someone wants to add something on these topics? No? <laughs> so, uh, 50, 55 minutes uh, all together. Uh, we plan a one hour webinar, so we are on time. Maybe if one, uh, one of you wants, uh, wants to, to add a, a few words for, for closing the, this webinar, please, uh, please go on. No. <laughs> so uh, the webinar will be will be in replay uh, on uh, Livestorm uh, tool and also on uh, LinkedIn uh, FlyOps page. Uh, we are very happy to, uh, to to have you with us today. Uh, thank you to uh, to to Pierre, to uh, Christophe, to Gérard, uh, to Arnold. Uh, and uh, to Arthur for being with us and uh, uh, trying to answer to all these topics 
uh, regarding these quizzes. Uh, we will be happy to, to follow up this webinar by uh, another one, maybe in the coming week. It, it was the first one for, for us in FlyOps. So uh, we are so happy. We hope uh, it will be useful for you. It will be interesting. Uh, David, uh, you have no answer regarding your question uh, regarding the value about the aircraft, uh, but uh, it wasn't the topic today, so uh, maybe we will send you the answer once uh, we will we will uh, have it. And uh, I want to thank you very much uh, all together and uh, wish you uh, a good uh, good afternoon and hope to see you soon uh, for another another webinar. Thank you very much. Thank, much. thank you very much. Thank you, Jean Christophe. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a thank nice you day. very much. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye. Take care.